Ah, video games. If you've been following my channel for a little while, you might know that I kind of like them. Those magical little pieces of software that make you forget about the difficulties of the real world. Like paying bills, working 9 to 5s, raising kids, the list is endless. Today I'm happy to be coming to you with yet another game review. And I think you guys will like this one. The last game I reviewed on the channel was the House of the Dead remake for the Nintendo Switch. Pretty awful game overall in its current state. I was really excited about it for years, and it ended up being a large disappointment. So it's nice to play something for review purposes that I enjoyed much more. I'm personally not a huge PC exclusive gamer. I primarily play on consoles, but if there is a PC game worth checking out, I'm more than happy to. I don't have any loyalty to a specific platform. With the release of the Steam Deck, I've actually become more interested in finding all these really cool indie games that exist on Steam that I would otherwise miss out on. And I do know that some of those do get released on the Switch eShop, but those are quickly drowned out by the enormous amount of shovelware that's on there. It's a disorganized disaster on the Nintendo eShop. So today's video is going to be about one of those gems. The game's name, Biota, I think. To be honest, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's how it's spelled. B-I-O-T-A, with periods in between. Biota, Biota, I'm gonna call it Biota. As of now, it's available on Steam and GOG, and it's an absolute steal at the current regular price of $9.99. It's published by a company called Retro Vibe, and developed by Small Bros. Looking up Small Bros previous games, it looks like there's only one other one called Ghostly Matter that I'd like to check out now didn't really come up with anything else they worked on. I would say that Biota is a strong addition to Small Bros resume though. I play video games of all genres and sizes, I've been gaming since the Atari slash NES days, and I don't plan on ever quitting, so I've kept up with the latest and greatest. However, if you make me choose between an old school retro game like a Final Fight or a Mega Man versus a brand new game like Horizon 2 Forbidden West, I'll likely always go the retro route. In this modern era we're living in of PS5's 4K, 8K, crazy high frame rates, and tetraflops, there's been this growing trend that doesn't really take advantage of any of that technology. A trend of bringing back the old. For example, remasters of previous classics, re-releases, updated ports, arcade collections, but there is another segment that blurs the line between old and new. Brand new releases that feel like something from a bygone era. New retro style games. There's been some examples in recent years, some excellent ones, like The Mummy Demastered, which took the awful Tom Cruise movie, it's so boring, and somehow churned out an instant classic of a Metroidvania-style game. This game is amazing. Cyber Shadow's another one that feels like a cross between Strider and Ninja Gaiden, it's pretty badass too. There's also been some not-so-great examples of retro revivals like the as-of-yet-to-be-released Intellivision Amico with its Flash-style games that simply look outdated with very little retro appeal to modern audiences. I'm happy to say that Biota falls right alongside The Mummy Demastered and Cyber Shadow as one of those great ones. Now, before I really get into the review, let me get a quick disclaimer out of the way. This video is sponsored by Catapult, a platform that helps content creators like myself directly connect with game developers. So this game was provided free of charge, and I don't care for the term honest review, because I mean, every review should be honest anyways. Otherwise, that calls the integrity of all your other content into question. So I'll say this, having had the game provided won't color my opinion in any way. It's going to be treated the same way I would treat any other game. Let me start off by saying that if you're from my childhood years, the late 80s to the mid 90s, this game was made with you in mind 100%. Not that people from generations before or after can't enjoy it, very far from it. But this was very obviously made to hit that retro nostalgia vibe that the 8 to 16 bit era provided. Although Biota is influenced by multiple sources, the best way I can describe in a quick manner how this game makes me feel. Let's use coffee as an example. You wake up in the morning, you grab your coffee mug, and oh wait, the coffee mug is Super Metroid themed. Let's brew some Contra flavored coffee in there. So you take your Aliens creamer, yes Aliens, the 1986 action sci-fi classic is what I mean when I say that. You still need your sugar, so you sprinkle some synthwave music on top. You have a nice modern cup of nostalgia there that feels both familiar and new.
blend of Metroid, Contra, Aliens, and, and a bunch of other stuff in between. That's Biota. The story takes us to the future, the beginning of the 22nd century. Surprised they didn't just say it was the year 20XX like a lot of these things do. A meteor crashed in North America and an unknown element was found inside of it. They called this new element Viridium, and it became an energy source important to space travel. As humanity spread through the galaxy, mining companies established colonies, and the typical corporate-run future came about. Corporations became all-powerful, and the corporation known as V-Corp, our story's Wayland yutani took control of the majority of Viridium Fields. Now it's the year 2177, and some sort of biological organism took over one of V-Corp's mines, the asteroid Frontier Horizon. I told you this was going to sound very similar to Aliens. I mean, look at the eggs even. This is LV-426. The mystery organism was called the Agent, and V-Corp sent a science team to investigate. All contact was lost. You mean like the colonists on LV-426? And you, the player, are part of an elite military force known as Gemini Squad 2. Sent into the asteroid to find out what happened. You mean like the space marines and aliens? By the way, by comparing the story to Aliens, I'm not trying to make it seem like the developers weren't original for taking inspiration from the movie. I mean this in a totally positive manner. Aliens is one of my favorite films of all time. Any similarity to Aliens is welcome. The game starts off immediately with a bang. The asteroid's falling apart, and you have to get back to your shuttle and escape before it's too late. It doesn't start off slow at all, but it does take the opportunity in the meantime to teach you the basic mechanics of the game, and it's nothing complicated. If you've played a 2D shooter style game, you know how to play this. You jump, you shoot, you move around the environment. And why is everything falling apart? Well, that's part of the story. The game starts you off near the end of the game's events, so the entire game afterwards is mostly past events that take place a few hours earlier. That leads into this beginning sequence. And right away, you can tell the game's soundtrack is going to be a treat. Just listen to this. The entire soundtrack is comprised of callbacks to retro-style NES games, with your Mega Man-style 8-bit beats to some more modern retro-style synthwave. Once you arrive at the beginning of the story, it drops you into a main little hub area where you can return any time in the game. You get a transporter very early on, so teleporting back here is a piece of cake. In this area, you can heal your character, teleport back to fast travel points located all around the map. You can also buy stuff from the black market shop here, although there are a lot of black market shops scattered around the map too which is a very important game element. There's a training area. This whole spot is more of a staging area that you can use to prep yourself before going back into the field, into the depths of the asteroid. Admittedly, I wasn't feeling the game in its first maybe 30 minutes or so. It did feel like a fairly linear one with a small map, gunning it from room to room, using the same little pea shooter. The gameplay variety wasn't there, but I was wrong. <laughs> and I realized that after I rescued the first character. The first character they give you, I didn't really care about his weapon, but there are characters scattered around the game that you could rescue. Then you return to the main hub and switch them out as you please. I had a ton of fun just swapping characters and trying them all out. I ended up playing as one for an entire section, then the next section I would try out the next one, until I found the one I liked the best. Some of the characters you can be are Jade the Scientist, she's got a pulse pistol, and each character has a special move too, which can also be added on to later in the game with additional special abilities. Jade's got the ability to craft a health kit, which is crucial at the beginning of the game before you start collecting any health increase upgrades. Zed the Stalker ended up being my favorite one, equipped with a powerful shotgun and a shield that slightly protects you from damage. Notice each one is from a different country or region too. The Stalker is from Mars. Ace is the veteran. He has a quick firing machine gun and grenades as his initial special. Flint the Raider is the sniper of the group, and the sniper shot ability was a really cool way to implement a sniper skill set into a Metroidvania style game. It brings up this crosshair that you can move around the map and aim it at enemies without a direct line of sight. And Kirill is a mutant equipped with a thermic gun and C4 at his disposal. 
Everyone's going to play this game differently. Experimenting with all different characters was a huge benefit to the gameplay, and I'm glad they included different ones instead of just the one main character. And I mentioned before I thought the game was a bit linear due to the initial small map, but as you explore, it quickly opens up to new areas, revealing a much larger region to explore, multiple branching paths. As expected, you will eventually have to backtrack also to get special items. And it's in your best interest to explore every nook and cranny you haven't checked yet, since some story progression items have to be purchased at various black market locations. And you'll notice that your, let's call it your in-game wallet, is capped at a certain amount of currency. There's collectibles in the game that increases your wallet size by 100, and you'll need to find those in order to buy the more expensive items required to progress deeper into the asteroid. And the game keeps you playing by making you think, I wonder what's next? There's a mix of variety when it comes to the gameplay, depending on where you are in the asteroid. At one point you have to save up and buy a valve handle, for example, and it never feels grindy. You can save up pretty quickly by killing a couple enemies, but this valve handle, for example, opens up a path so you can play through the underwater submarine section. You need some shuttle keys from one area to access an escape shuttle in another area. You can't access the nuclear radiation area without recruiting an android teammate that's immune to the effects of radiation. And then a timer starts and the game becomes a race to the reactor that you have to shut down before it's too late. This was easily one of my favorite sections in the game. It was really exciting and the first time I almost made it with a split second when I died. The second time I did much better with plenty of time left. You might also need some fuel to power up a machine so you could traverse a long shoot 'em up area. It's so cool. Graphically, as you can see, the game is very much pixel-based. It looks like something that would have been right at home on the Game Boy. It's got that Game Boy feel to it. And if you want, you can make it look exactly like that. It's got a total of 54 different color palettes that you could switch on the fly. Huge amount, but they're not all available right away. There's collectibles that unlock more of them one at a time. I kept swapping through all the different palettes to see which one I liked the best, and this will all come down to preference, really. You can make it look like the old green Game Boy screen, the most nostalgic for me personally, or black and white like the Game Boy Light, those bright blue and purple hues from the old MS-DOS era. There's so many different ways to make it look. After suffering from an immense amount of indecisiveness, I decided to stick with the standard orange one that's on by default. I think it really does look the best, and it matches the feel of the game. Some of them were a bit too dark for my liking and made some of the enemies hard to see. The game does try to alleviate that by having a bright border around some of the enemies, but it's still a little too dark for some of them. They were all fun to experiment with, but yes, I did like the default one the best. And you'll find a variety of enemies from infected people, bugs, alien goo, face huggers that instantly turn you into a monster and you're dead. There's also a couple bosses you face that are really fun fights. They range from just shooting it until it's dead to timing explosive drops in its mouth until it's dead. The boss variety is one of the game's many strengths. Biota does range from being fairly easy at the beginning to becoming quite challenging by the end. I never felt like it was unbeatable though, but there were sections that I kept dying over and over and over. Here's where some criticisms do come in, especially in later areas. I thought there was a bit too many areas with one hit kills. The environmental hazards, some of them felt a bit tedious to get through. They require, for example, precise timing to jump through electric gates, barrels that explode, and the explosions take you out right away. I don't mind areas with one hit kills, but I feel like reducing some of them in this game would have been a good idea. There's quite a bit. Now to give the game credit, it does alleviate the issue by having some save points, and as long as there's no enemies on the screen, you can quick save with save state anytime. 
and some of the sections of the game with different gameplay last a little too long. There's one segment when you're in your shuttle, flying in a space shooting, almost Galaga style section. It was awesome at first, but it felt like it went on forever, fighting the same enemies over and over until you reach the end of the bar that's on the right side. They could have easily cut the length of the section in half and it would have been just fine. At some point, it just felt like padding simply to extend the length of the game. There's also a Battletoad styled section where you're rappelling down. I felt the same way about this one. Cool at first, lasted way too long. Although I do have those criticisms, it doesn't really affect my enjoyment overall of the game, since they're not badly designed at all, just needed to be shorter. If you're looking for a fun Metroidvania style shooter that won't take a million years to beat, this game really is right up your alley. It took me about 5 or 6 hours of gameplay to finish my first playthrough. For the record, I didn't rush through it, but I didn't get 100% either, proven by unfortunately getting the bad ending, so I do plan to replay it to get the good ending. It's got a healthy set of Steam achievements, it's got full controller support, I simply plugged in my Series X controller with a USB cable and it worked just fine without any type of configuration. Plug and play. And there's also plenty of post-game content to enjoy. There's a time trial kind of mode, shooting gallery type of thing. I, I don't care so much about those game modes, but the game does give you a reason to replay the campaign by unlocking more characters for beating the game. Well worth my time. To close off the review, if you're interested in the game, I do have a direct link down below in the description to purchase it. I don't think you'll regret it. Fun retro shooter. Pick it up. Leave me your thoughts down below, and I'll catch you guys later.